Video number 11, creating a My NCBI account. Let's see how we create a My NCBI account for ourselves. Why do we need to do this? If we create an account for ourselves, we can do a whole lot more with our PubMed display, with our results and still more. So let's first learn how to create the account and then we'll see the advantages of creating an account. For this, we go to the PubMed homepage and click sign in to NCBI, which is on the top right, just above the search box on the right. Once you click sign in to NCBI, you get options for creating your NCBI account. On the top, you can see sign in with Google and a couple of other choices. So if you have a Gmail or Google account, do click sign in with Google and you'll follow the steps to register, which is you'll have to put in your login ID, password and more. We'll display the steps in the next slide. On the lower half, you have the option. If you do not have a Google or Gmail account, you will click register for an NCBI account, the link which is right at the bottom. Like in any website, you will create your own username and password. There may be a couple of more questions that they ask you. And once you're done, you would have created your account. So in future, when you have to use PubMed, you will click that sign in to NCBI, sign in with Google and go ahead if you have Gmail or once you come here in the second part of the screen, in the lower part, you see sign in directly to NCBI. So you will put in your username, password and click sign in. Let's look at the steps in a little more detail. <clears throat> On the left side, we are putting down the steps if you have a Gmail account. So you'll click the sign in with Google and you will enter your Gmail ID or Google login and password. In the next screen, you'll have some choices. You just click accept. And in the further next screen, create a uh, click, create a new NCBI account. This is something you do for the first time. After that, when you're subsequently coming back, if you just click that sign in with Google, if you're already signed in in another window with your Gmail, you'd be automatically authenticated. Otherwise, just put in your Gmail. ID and password. Now, if you have chosen the other option where you registered for an NCBI account, what are the steps that will come up? You click register for an NCBI account. You'll fill in details, which is username, password, and they'll say repeat password. And then they'll ask you for some things about in case you forget your password, there'll be some security questions and answers. You can choose those. When you're putting in your username, do look out for a sign that says your username is already taken. If you put in a common uh, username like AB Shah, it's highly likely that it's already taken. So a message will pop up. You need to watch out for that and modify the username accordingly. Then keep putting in some password and go ahead and create your account. So you can create a uh, account for yourself either using your Gmail or do a register for an NCBI account. Once you do this, you can, we are showing you the first advantage of creating your NCBI account. You can set a certain preference. How do we do that? So just below that my NCBI, you can see that I'm signed in. Just below that, there are some links. And you click that NCBI site preferences. When you click that, what happens? You have something called common preferences. Under that, there is a link which says highlighting. You click highlighting. You can choose a color and click save. Once you do that, when you run a search, your search terms will show up in that color. So once you click save, 
just click the back button and you'll go back to the PubMed homepage. Let's go online and take a look at how we do all this. So sign in to NCBI. You can see I'm already signed in. Those steps are easy to follow. I'm just showing you the personalization. I'm clicking my NCBI. So below that we have NCBI site preferences. I'm clicking that. And you have common preferences under which I've chosen the second one, highlighting. And I had already chosen aqua. You could choose any color. You go down and click save. So aqua is the chosen color. This way there are many other preferences, but we are not teaching you all those because that would mean too many more things to learn at one shot. You could try them out one by one once you've learned to use PubMed in more detail. So uh, maybe I could just explain one more. It says auto suggest is on. You would have noticed that when we are typing in the search box, automatically it is showing different uh, options that we might use to search. If such a list irritates you, you could just come and choose auto suggest and turn it off so that it's only what you are typing that is going to matter. So now I've done my choosing. I go back. And if I go one step back again, I'm on the PubMed homepage. But right here, we are also at search PubMed. We can run a search here. Let's just do malaria. I'm clicking search. You can see that malaria is highlighted wherever it is. In this, it's not there in the title. But if I go in, you can see malaria is highlighted in the abstract. So it's really something useful when you're searching long lists and you want to know where your search term is. So this is one of the things you can do if you create your own My NCBI account. We'll be learning the usage of the My NCBI account in further videos in different contexts. So for now, let's go back. This is the way we set our preferences once we create a My NCBI account. And we'll go further ahead to the other videos. Thank you.